Could we be approaching the biggest adoption of NFTs in the history of crypto? Today, we're going to dive into all that good stuff and just find out what is causing all the moves in the entire space. We'll break that all down. My name is Paul Barrow. Welcome back into Tech Path. Let's get into a couple of things today. We're going to be talking about NFTs, the adoption, Polygon's in the center of this, along with Meta, how this all plays out, and some other players that could be coming into the game quickly. And there's a lot happening in the space. I do want to thank our sponsor on that, and that is iTrust Capital. If you guys are looking at long term right now, we're nearing, nearing the year end, which means you've got to start prepping for either one tax positions uh, or looking at long term. And long term is the way to play it when you look at crypto IRAs. Make sure and check out iTrust Capital. I was just looking over at their available currencies, cryptocurrencies and precious metals. You can kind of see just the full list there. If you click over there, you can see a full list of what they have. They continue to add a ton of opportunities in here. So make sure and check it out. All of this can be done within their platform. So just a, a small fee for the trade. If you're inside the platform, no fees per month. And of course, if you do open an account, you can get a $100 funding reward just by using our link in the description below. So make sure and check that out. All right, let's get into it. Uh, and there's a couple of things happening here around Meta. And, and again, Meta and I think Twitter and Meta, this is something I've talked about for quite some time is that the evolution of where social and the potential of what these tech companies would mean to crypto, blockchain, NFTs, metaverse was going to be bigger than I think a lot of people really understood. And this is a good example of it. Uh, Meta is now introducing new tools for creators to build businesses on Facebook and in and uh, Instagram. And this is pretty deep because there's quite a bit here. So you've got uh, a way for creators to make their own NFTs or digital collectibles, sell them to fans and collectors both on and off Instagram. This to me is kind of its own marketplace starting to develop. Uh, they're also adding new ways for people to show appreciation for their favorite creators. Another way for, you know, kind of that creator ecosystem to really flourish. And then they're launching some new profile settings uh, that allow creators to build a public presence, but yet still maintaining their personal account. This is something that I have to do a lot. So I think it is um, an opportunity here for where this is going. Uh, they'll have end-to-end -end toolkit, uh, creation start from Polygon blockchain and showcasing uh, to selling. You know, so you're going to be able to do all that within the uh, app itself, even though the transaction is happening on the Polygon blockchain. They're testing new features with a small group of creators uh, here in the United States. More are going to be coming in. Meta, if you're listening, we'd love to get in on that. Um, and then you can also showcase on Instagram to uh, include video and adding support for the Solana blockchain and Phantom Wallet. So uh, all sorts of potentials here. The other cool thing is subscriptions are coming on Instagram. This is something that uh, I've actually talked about for quite some time. I think Twitter's probably going to go this direction as well. We'll probably start seeing, even though you do have the capability of doing that kind of now already, it's just not out in front and it really isn't monetized to the level that I think it could be. Man, this could be a collision course between Meta, Meta and Twitter in terms of how NFTs are integrated, how a wallet might play into this. Very interesting stuff. Stars and gifts, uh, they're making it easier for people to discover stars on Facebook, including Reels. Uh, bringing stars to the party reels. Uh, there's a new set of virtual gifts tailored for specific content. This gets into digital collectibles. And then they give creators more tools to engage uh, with star senders. So this is going to be cool. I think this is um, one of the things that really starts to separate Meta from the pack. And I think even though a lot of people are still knocking on Meta because of their earnings and because of the amount of free cash flow, all the problems that have really been outlined in this recent quarterly earnings, I have a feeling that there is a lot happening in the background that they've been working on here in this last year and a half, two years, and we're going to start to see things just like this. So the Polygon integration into this, this is huge. The opportunity is real, and uh, the potential is pretty cool. Here's professional mode for Facebook profiles. Let me zoom up on that a little bit for you guys. Um, so you can kind of see a new profile setting allows creators uh, to build public presence, and maintain their uh, personal side. So opportunities begin with growing uh, kind of a global community off the personal profile. And then you can do content audience analytics, which I think is going to be huge. Educational resources, uh, all sorts of things that are really playing into this. There is some fees that will play into this as well. And I think there was something I wanted to show you guys. 
on that uh, because there are some fees potentially that play into this uh, around how this might engage on the, yeah, right here, resale commission right here. Let me kind of zoom up on that. So it's a 5% resale commission on the collectibles. So again, I think this is going to be another, and there you see uh, direct uh, integration in the MetaMask wallet. The cool thing here too with MetaMask is this right here. Look at this. Digital collectibles right there, complete conversion to basic USD. So as you guys know, this is one of the big things that uh, really kind of holds back mass adoption in the NFT space is this whole issue around wallet uh, and what you need in terms of a wallet and then the ability to have the tokens, all those kind of things that play into this. So I think there are some uniquenesses coming down the pipe um, for Meta. Here was a, a quick uh, post from uh, Solana Instagram and Facebook have integrated support for Solana NFTs uh, in the Instagram app. So you can go ahead and you know connect your own Phantom wallet, plug it in, off you go. Not, not as big, and I will say this, you know, when we get into the comparison, because I think a lot of people um, follow us because we talk a lot about Solana. Solana has been one of those that is kind of a love-hate for me. I just, it's one of those projects, I, I like what they're trying to do, but I just don't, I feel like technically it just seems to run up against problems all the time. And uh, that's no different. I'll talk to you about it at the end of the episode today. We'll break some Solana news here. But uh, MetaQuest, uh, Ray-Ban, you know, the Ray-Ban stories. I'd love to get your input on this. Do you guys have the Ray-Ban stories? I mean, I, I like my Ray-Bans right here. But the Ray-Ban stories are these new glasses that literally just go right into uh, Facebook or Meta and create stories on the fly. So you've got full visual, you've got the onboard camera, audio, all that good stuff. Kind of curious, do you guys use it? Have you ever used it? Do you like it? Leave, leave some comments below if that is the case. But both of these are now selected as two of Oprah's favorites. So again, mass adoption. Sure, the MetaQuest kind of a little bit priced out of mainstream, but the Ray-Ban stories, they could be because it's about a couple hundred bucks for a set of those. So kind of interesting. I'm gonna, uh, I probably should get my pair out because I bought them quite a while ago and I just have never used them, but I need to. The other thing is Reddit. You know, we've been talking about Reddit and what they have done in terms of the value and creation of NFTs overall. This is Fortune uh, Crypto. I want to break down a couple of storylines in here that are pretty cool. Um, obviously, we know about Reddit and kind of the movement here, but they're going to allow artists to now create designs, signature avatar, mint them, uh, all, all on uh, the Ethereum tied to the Polygon blockchain, which again, just reiterates our whole you know, push on Polygon. And right now, when I look at the two assets between Solana and Polygon, if I am comparing, even though you know, it's not really a safe comparison, it's a layer one, two uh, comparison, but I do like uh, Polygon in the long term here uh, over Solana. So I've, I've started to move a lot of my own investment strategies into Polygon. Uh, just here recently did a trade and uh, continuing to look at that one. So interesting. Um, other things that were in this that I thought were interesting. In the future, they see blockchain as one way to bring more empowerment and independence to communities on Reddit. This all also, remember this is Alexis Ohanian uh, he founded that, and he is a huge crypto uh, investor and also kind of like an A16 in the sense of an investment and a VC that's trying to pour a lot of money into blockchain. We are getting ready to get into an arms race uh, in the coming months and possibly over 2023 because 24 is going to be insane, both on market run-up, uh, recovery, the opportunities, but building. That's what's happening right now, guys. Building. You have to pay attention to who is building and why. Uh, purchasers will also have the rights to use art on and off Reddit and avatars could be stored on the Ethereum Polygon blockchain, meaning purchasers would have ownership and portability. Again, these are some of the key things that we'll find more and more into a lot of this. Further into the article, it says the, uh, explaining the exploded launch of the second gen uh, avatars on October 20th. Many of these were popular collections selling out in minutes. 10 million, 10 million on this one. Oof. The opportunity for Reddit is going to be huge. They're going to just absolutely go off. October 18th, here's the Reddit uh, chief product officer. This is Polybot. Three million Redditors have created a wallet or, uh, or vault. And then, you know, we did a full video on this. So go back and check it. I think we just did it last week. We've got a lot of details on that. A lot of times we drop that over on the Metaverse show, but uh, it was a really good point. And then OpenSea said it had seen a 75% increase in users on Polygon since Reddit's adoption on October 20th uh, on the drop. 
And then 20% of Reddit owners who also made the transaction on OpenSea have gone to purchase other NFTs on the platform. So it just creates that awareness. Then people start getting into it and it's going to cause, remember, we, everybody was worried that the NFT market was dying. And the reality is that uh, we are just in a very nascent time right now. It's in a building time. It's in a time in which we've got to cover a lot of bases in terms of new development and new innovation and, and kind of create a roadmap. And when I say we, meaning all of blockchain, Polygon, Polygon is just on top of it. But if you look at the numbers right here, here's Dune Analytics just on Polygon. You can kind of see, this is it right there. Bam, 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 bam. I mean, you see massive movement here. Now, will this continue is the question. I'd love to get your impact on that. Do you guys think that NFTs are now possibly at the threshold of major adoption? Because if they are, if we do truly see adoption, whether it's digital collectibles, NFTs, or utility aspects of NFTs, is 2023 going to be the year that truly all of that comes out? Love to get your input on that. Drop it in below. Make sure and smash like on the, on the video. It does help us and others start to learn about this. So it all benefits the overall market uh, when it's out there. Let's go to another tweet. This was kind of a, a good example. I want you guys to let this sink in for just a second here. Cardano, this is 2x currently trading at two times the fully diluted value of Polygon. It's, it's, I mean, you think about mispricings, but undervaluing right now, it's either overvalue or undervalue. You're either overvaluing what Cardano has done up to this date, or you look at the just the line list of integrations that have happened with Matic, and they are completely undervalued. I think it's the latter. I think Matic is just highly undervalued right now. And at some point, now granted, we're gonna see downtrends in the market. Bitcoin's gonna drop. We'll start to see some pressures in layer two for sure. But the real story is how does it come out of this? Remember, build, 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 build. Be ready for the run up and be ready for scooping along. As uh, we've talked about many times, be ready in those back ends. This coming over from, um, uh, Robinhood prepping for the launch of its global crypto wallet. There's a lot happening here within this too. Let me zoom up on this so you guys read it with me a little bit. So long-term Robinhood uh, wants to, obviously they want the digital wallet to be in place where you manage everything. Uh, they've, they've pumped up their uh, interest rates on uh, cash holdings there within the app as well. I think it's almost 4% now. Uh, and they do want the highest value, best user experience. I would still say the Robinhood app is probably the sexiest app out there finance-wise. Um, but the second thing they want is the default choice for your first financial account. This to me is the goal in which they have to really kind of, they kind of have to move at a pace for them to be number one. You know, when you go to your phone and that's the account you open uh, for finance, they've got a long ways to go, I think, for that to really occur. Now, the fact that they are moving with crypto finance, they're starting to pay interest on cash, uh, that to me is a big step in the right direction. The problem is, is that remember, they're still a stock trading app. So I'll explain that in a second. Um, calling the decentralized web, web, web three, the future of operating system for financial services. Totally agree. But he also, they really love the no gas fee trading. Um, Tanev also said it's one of the several pathways to an international expansion. I would agree uh, for launching Robinhood, uh, their wallet globally early next year. So 2023. How many of you guys are on the list right now to get the wallet? The wallet, love to know. Drop some comments down below. Uh, we have one of our guys in the crypto pit that's pretty close on, I think he's maybe within a couple hundred uh, in the wait list. So we may see uh, an, an opportunity to take a look at it and give you guys a report early. Uh, they're hoping that customers understand and appreciate the moving, you know, they're moving carefully and sometimes they're moving a little slower. I would agree in comparison to, to crypto, I mean, in comparison to Polygon, everybody's moving slowly right now. Uh, but it is a, a good example, I think, of what they're trying to do as an overall company. The problem is this, guys. They are still a mobile-only app. And being a mobile-only app, they could fall into a big deal with Apple. And Apple is, is literally becoming one of the evil empire players because of the limitations on creativity I'm just curious to at to what extent we're going to see in-app purchases really take place with Apple and the 30% and how this may affect evolution. And do we see maybe something starting to develop? Does this leave an opening for something like maybe the Solana phone? If Solana can pull out of their current situation, maybe um, you know the saga has a better opportunity here. 
This is another thing with Robinhood that I think, uh, this is somebody nobody saw coming. This is Robinhood's interest income has more than doubled since last year, causing a positive EBITDA. Uh, and again, remember, this is because of the amount of money that they're drawing in through interest rates uh, and also just the acquisition of cash in the, in the accounts. Even though they're dropping significantly in overall users, if you look further into it right here, U.S. Uh, markets are down 30, but they're activity in terms of monthly active users is down 50. I think this is a short period, short time, you know, situation with them. Everybody that was trading, most, you know, a lot of young traders got wrecked and many people just want to put it away. They, you know, they kind of go that direction. But once we start to see movement on uh, the bottom of the market, I think that's when we'll start seeing user growth go back up for Robinhood. Uh, and then here it is right here. Um, Right here, by the way, interest rate now for uninvested cash increasing to 3.75 on Friday. So there you go. Uh, if this hits 4% and if it starts to stay tracking inflation, this becomes intriguing because Robinhood is now competing with the likes of Discover and many other online services that are offering 3 to 4.5% interest, which in many cases, if you look at some of the staking out there in crypto, this starts to challenge the norm of what DeFi is doing. Now, granted, there are some much better, you know, staking opportunities out there along with the gains in that because you're not dealing with a deflate, deflationary dollar, but uh, it is a good point. Um, and I like the fact that they're going in that direction. Meta, uh, jumping in here to the block, uh, Meta to use a decentralized data storage protocol, Arweave. You know, we saw this coming. We just did not really focus on this one. Uh, sentiment data was moving on it. Uh, but it was kind of under the radar. So um, this is one we kind of missed in an opportunity. But Render was one that was a good one. Polygon uh, is one that is a good one that we've hit on. Uh, but they've integrated decentralized data storage. I think this is also very important. As you guys know, we've talked about we many times. Data in Web3 is huge. So big one. Uh, Instagram users can now uh, issue digital collectibles for their posts stored, stored on Arweave. Uh, and then the price of Arweave's token, we know um, it surged 75% since this meta integration. You're going to see more of this, guys. So get ready. Follow the, um, the waves here because meta is going to lead through the blockchain community in a way that we have not seen before. The other company that is going to do that is Twitter. And Twitter's just a little bit behind because Elon wasn't at the head. But we are going to see fast, fast expansion, I think, on, twi on Twitter. Uh, Meta also believes NFTs can help expand the creator economy. I totally agree. Uh, NFTs market compared to where we think it's going, this is going to get big uh, quickly. So lots happening out there for sure. I want to jump to this uh, last tweet here. Major announcement. Meta is now using Arweave permanently uh, to permanently store digital collectibles from Instagram. So you kind of saw it in there. Um, and then kind of the last story that is unfortunate, but it, it also showcases why you have to be prepared. And that is 20% of Solana's nodes are now gone uh, because of the company that was hosting those nodes basically delisted them or, and booted them off. Uh, this 16.9% of Ethereum uh, is now at risk. This is a problem. Uh, Solana, again, has known this. This gets back into the scenario of, I don't know. I, it, it, you hear, you've heard me talk about it many times. I just don't get why this team has not been able to come out and really hit it on the level that Solana needs to because it has a great product. It has a great build. But the opportunity here is just continuously getting swandered away with either outages or this kind of craziness. So just into the story a little bit right here. So 20% um, of the validators going down. Solana might face another series of technical issues. Um, and this is in case it shows that uh, this was Hetzner's, which was the host, um, basically were holding the uh, nodes themselves. So should be considered a warning for Ethereum node operators. This is something that we've talked about right here around centralized and decentralized. That's some of the risk. We've talked about this before, even with AWS, if you have too much centralization, even within, within Amazon, all of this could come to a screeching halt if you get into those kind of scenarios. So... If you're running a Solana node, make sure to switch a different provider as soon as possible. So this is a big deal right now among the node operators. All right. If you guys are tuned in on the podcast, make sure and plug in here on the YouTube channel because this is really kind of the place where we do a lot of the breakdowns, a lot of analysis. 
Uh, we didn't have time to do sentiment today on this, but I do want to do a full breakdown. We're going to be on with Evan in the morning. We'll give you guys sentiment on all the altcoins. Most of the big ones, obviously Polygon, Solana will be in there. Matt, you know, we'll get going for you guys. So don't, don't fear. Just make sure and subscribe to the channel. Hit like. It uh, really helps it out. And of course, if you guys want to reach me, it's out there on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.